Greetings, folks. Welcome. I'm some random economist, and thanks for checking out my channel. In this video, we're going to examine what Disney World's annual attendance might look like if the park places caps on the number of guests. This topic might be of interest if you're a fan of Disney or if you're curious about the impacts of COVID-19 on theme parks. Like a lot of businesses, especially those in the hospitality and entertainment sectors, Disney World faces a lot of challenges when designing and implementing its reopening plan. The whole experience of visiting a theme park involves a lot of people in close physical proximity, and it's very difficult to practice any form of social distancing. Nevertheless, I've heard discussions about several measures that Disney World might take when reopening its theme parks. These include virtual queues, so there will be fewer people waiting in lines, and hand sanitizer stations to keep your fingers clean. You're also likely to see Disney World cast members and guests wearing facial masks. And finally, the topic of this video, Disney World will likely place caps on the number of daily visitors. I've heard discussions of limiting the number of guests to 25% of the park's capacities, and then up to 50%. So that raises the question, how many people can visit Disney World? And now let's focus just on the Magic Kingdom at 50% and 25% capacity. To answer this question, we can use data on attraction wait times and some good old economic analysis. Now here's the boring part. I used data on over 300,000 wait time observations collected from 2014 to the present. That's a lot of data. I then conducted a regression analysis to strip away the influence on wait times related to specific attractions. For example, Space Mountain has longer wait times than It's a Small World and the time of day. For example, wait times are longer in the afternoon than early in the morning. Finally, I used 100,000 guests for the Magic Kingdom's maximum capacity and assumed that the park reaches its capacity on New Year's Eve. After performing some economic data analysis, voila! I come up with estimated attendance figures for every day of the year. On this chart, you see higher attendance around spring break week in March, during the summer months, around Thanksgiving, and then the time around Christmas and New Year's. If you add up the estimated attendance for every day of the year, you get a total of 19.9 million visitors, which is within 2% of the average Magic Kingdom attendance numbers between 2014 and 2018, as reported by Themed Entertainment Association. Now, let's look at the impacts of the visitor caps. First, we'll consider a cap of 50% of the park's capacity. This would be 50,000 visitors per day. Since the estimated attendance numbers exceed 50,000 guests in 274 of 365 days, a cap of 50% of the park's capacity would affect the number of visitors in about three-fourths of the year. And overall, a daily visitor cap of 50% of the park's capacity would result in an 11% reduction in the estimated number of annual visitors. Next, let's consider a cap of 25% of the park's capacity. This is equivalent to 25,000 guests per day. It's clear from the figure that this cap would affect attendance every day of the year. Overall, a daily visitor cap of 25% of the park's capacity would lead to a 49% reduction in the estimated number of annual visitors. Finally, let's go back to a cap of 50% of the park's capacity, but now let's focus on the time period between July 4th and the end of the year. In this figure, you can see periods of higher attendance related to summer vacation, Thanksgiving, and the last week of the year. There's also a stretch around early September when the Magic Kingdom welcomes fewer guests due to the start of school. If we just focus on the second half of the year, a cap of 50% of the park's capacity would affect the number of visitors in 107 out of 181 days. Over this half-year period, the cap would result in a 9% reduction in the number of visitors. So now let's wrap things up. I promised 10 slides, and I like to keep my promises. We just looked at what the Magic Kingdom's attendance figures might look like if Disney places a cap on the number of guests. Limiting the number of guests to 50% of the park's capacity would decrease attendance by about 10%. It was 11% when figured over the entire year, and 9% between the 4th of July and New Year's Eve. A cap set at 25% of the park's capacity would decrease attendance by about 50% figured over an entire year. I'll conclude this video with some caveats related to these numbers. The figures were calibrated using wait times between 2014 and the present time, and the vast majority are from before 2020. If there's a change in guest behavior, that is if people are reluctant to return to theme parks when they reopen at limited capacity, the impacts could differ from those presented above. In a different analysis, I looked at wait times in the days leading up to the park's closure and found that people were staying away from Disney World. This suggests that the reduction in overall attendance could be larger than I predicted. On the other hand, and you knew this was coming, I am an economist after all, 
Some guests might be apt to purposely seek out times when there are traditionally fewer visitors to Disney World, such as the period starting at the end of August. If guests impacted by the attendance caps adjust their reservations to other times of the year, the impact of the cap could be smaller than what I predicted. Finally, it's unclear exactly how Disney World might implement attendance caps. I assume that a 50% cap would allow 50,000 people into the Magic Kingdom. This is based on a total park capacity, only reached a few times a year, of 100,000 guests. Of course, I'm not privy to how Disney World is thinking about these caps. I'm just some random economist. <laughs>